Hey everybody, as you see in the picture here in the beginning of the video, there's a bunch of random odd things laying on top of my work table. And what we have today is we have electrical tape, some wiring, a watt meter, some welder glue, which is good for 175 degrees, a piece of aluminum trimmed. And this, if you might recognize it, is the uh, defroster for a mirror. So the side mirror of your pickup or truck. I just picked this up in the junkyard. Uh, literally in their throwaway pile because it's in the plastic part they don't want. Now, a few uh, terminals and other things, a pair of tin snips, and the reason for the whole video, my cup of coffee. So, Kara usually brings me coffee out here, and and I'm like, I don't get around to it until it's almost cold, and I was interested in, huh, what do I do? Well, I'm tired of running the microwave for 15 seconds or 20 seconds every time I want to take a drink of coffee, and I've got all this free energy, basically, from all my solar. So all these lights and stuff up here is all the solar. And my battery bank is currently dropping power into the lawnmower battery. And I'm looking at it on the table. And I look at this sitting here going, huh, well, well, well. Let's test it out. Does it work? Yes, it does. Let's cut a piece of aluminum right there. That is 28 gauge, just stock aluminum flashing that you can get. Now, this is uh, trim coil stuff, so it's painted on one side. And then I have my little heater unit. One of the things, I want to show you guys something. Now, y'all, a lot of people know my shop. Um, y'all know I like Border Collies. But I want to show you one of them that's a little different. Eva, come here. I want you to look at this. This here, guys, is one quarter Coyote and three quarters McNabb Border Collie. So you look at her very carefully. <laughs> She is something else. Look at these eyes. And you ought to hear her talk. She's impressive. She's scared of the actual coyotes out in the hills, but she is one quarter coyote. Her mother was a half. And her mother was just untamable. But we got her as a rescue. So there she is. There's Emma. And there's Kira taking care of them. But back on the video. So if you hear yelping in the background, that's the reason I just showed you Eva. All right. Now, she's about a year old now, I think. Was she a year old? Yeah. And she's got the definite coyote run, the definite coyote submissiveness for the female, you name it. I'm going to get this plugged in, hooked up, and show you a watt reading, and then show you how I'm converting this. First, you have the two contacts here, and then what I did on the back is using nothing but 18-gauge wire, because this doesn't pull hardly no powers. I soldered them on to the contacts, and then made me a little notch. You'll see there a little notch there so the wires can come out. And then I'm going to take electrical tape and I'm going to put it on here. I'll have Kira hold this camera. Um, you want to cover your terminals, and the electrical tape is not going to be problematic. Use a good quality, though. Don't use some cheap stuff. So I want to cover those terminals very well because I'm going to be putting metal on it. And then I will put the welder glue on this whole thing all the way around. So let's go ahead and first start up by getting a temperature reading and a watt reading of what this does. We're going to go ahead and hook up the power and you'll watch the watt meter here. I got a screwdriver holding that up. You'll watch it kick on and light up and then it'll start showing a draw because we are wired in currently. And I've got the welder glue ready. So it's showing you it starts out high. As all heating elements will do, they'll start out high, but this will drop down to about 18 watts. And you can see it pulling 1.7 amps, my battery bank. We just came out here early in the morning. Solar's just not even yet kicking on. It's just the daybreak has just hit. So that was my battery bank at wake up right now. Of course, I am 50 feet from my battery bank, and this battery over here is taking some of the power, so it's probably just a little higher than that. It's probably about 12.55. And so as you see, the wattage is slowly dropping. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the temperature gun and we're going to get a reading. Now it's not to full temperature yet. 112, here's the table. 65 degrees. So these will run about 130 when they get to full temperature. I'm running it around there a little bit. So 
there we go 119 120 so you can see they build up temperature fairly fast and as they get up there now you'll notice it's dropped down to it's dropped down to 19 9 20 even watts 1.6 so it'll be about an amp and a half that it's going to be pulling once it's nice and warm now let's get another reading on it 120 so now pre-testing this before the video we got to 131 stable and we got to and i'll show you here we got to there's dropping amp still it gets to full temperature this will show 1.47 well it did when the voltage was a little lower and this over here so it might actually drop to 1.4 even and this over here was at um right at about 17 watts that's all it takes so the goal is to take this piece of metal here that is aluminum painted on one side just because that's what I have you could use anything and to set it on top of this and use the weld glue at the seam points and also lines of it on top of that it's not going to hurt that it's not hot enough this stuff handles about 180 degrees I think it's 175 is what it's rated for and burn is at 310 so I mean you ain't got to worry it, it won't even let loose it's when it cures all right so get the metal make sure it's nice and perfectly flat best I could get out of the pile I had and then you'll see a slight curve, a, a curling effect that these will do. See that kind of curling a little bit? Well, that's what the metal's for. Now, I can't just set a coffee cup on it because that's the mount for the uh, mirror to be able to pivot around, adjustable mirror. And this mirror come out of an F250, I think it was. Um, the best ones, actually, they have are out of Chrysler's. Um, trust me, they're better. Um, but that's just barely, I barely hold my hand on it. That's hot enough. So let's see if you get a reading on it. 132. So like I said, my battery voltage coming up a little bit. So I think it might peak near 140. But you're still 35 degrees or so underneath the limits of that. And if using the welder for this, you don't want to do that, then I wouldn't trip on it. All right, we're going to pause this, and I'm just going to do that, what I just said. Glue that and put that on there, and then we'll fire it up again. But this gives you an opportunity to use very little power. Look at it now. Here, show them that meter. Right now it's... Dropping down to 19.4, 19.3. So you're looking at that. So one and a half amps. That's, man, that's just nothing. Do you realize that's a 20-watt solar panel right there? Would, would do this, would run that. So, all right, I'll get this put together, and we'll bring back and show you the results. All right, guys, we've got the aluminum piece on, and we've got our two coffee cups sitting on there, Kira's coffee cup and mine. Now, mine's got a little less volume in it, but let's get a temperature check of hers, 121, of mine, 120. How come yours is warmer than mine, Kara? I don't know. Oh, there we go. That's better. <laughs> All right, 120, 120. So our coffee cups are the same temperature because while I let the glue dry, I went ahead and plugged it in, and it is running currently. Now, I do believe the aluminum is heat sinking it a little bit to make it draw just a little more amperage. So it's one and a half amps, almost 1.6, 20 watts of power. So what you have here is you have a, check this out, a one and a half amp, 12 volt DC by Pokey. And then here on the deck, our temperature is 131 degrees. So we're 131 degrees. And this has been sitting here now for 45 minutes. I don't think it's going to get any warmer, but it's kept our coffee. Um, hers was actually almost cold, and it's plastic. This is a plastic cup, and it was almost cold, and has brought it up to the temperature of my cup. Yeah, that's um, my favorite cup. That is Even her favorite. It's 40 years older than me. She got it from her great aunt, so it's very much favorite. <laughs> and there is your power consumption right there. So let's see. Total parts cost probably about 75 cents worth of glue, a piece of wire. Uh, the meter's not part of the deal. This piece of aluminum was scrapped. That was found in a junkyard. I'm going to go with about a dollar. Let's go with a dollar. Total cost, a dollar for a 12-volt warming plate that will run 130 degrees. Not too bad. So if you got a can of soup, you could probably put a can of soup on that, and it'd be nice and temperature-wise. Now, I would suggest soup be brought up to 165 degrees. But if you just wanted to warm up something, there you go. So we have the ability for a little tiny bit of a 20-watt solar panel off of our big system 
to heat our coffee or keep it hot while we're out here working in the shop. All right, and now we've got a nice little heater unit that didn't take much to make, and it's just out of a mirror. Not too bad. And don't worry, the electrical tape will handle the heat. Those, uh, that's supposed to be good for about 250 degrees. And we'll try this for a long time. And, oh, the thing is, you might notice uh, before I end the video, those defrosters on those mirrors, man, they last forever. So if you need to make something like this to slip under your tank on an RV or uh, around your battery, say around your battery on your car to keep it warm, look how cheap. For their battery warmer, they want 60 bucks. Go to a junkyard, get you a mirror. Boom, there you go. All right, guys, y'all be good.